You're interested in flying a two-stage rocket using electronics. The question you might have is, what battery should I use to ignite the motor and the ejection charges in the rocket? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'd like to talk about staging. I've recently been doing a lot of staging. We've been flying the Invicta rocket and the Nike Hercules, and a lot of people have questions about how to stage. And the big question that people have is which battery should I use? So here is a selection of batteries, and we sell all these here at Apogee Components, and you can also get nine volt batteries at any department store. But which one of these should you use? The answer depends. And mostly it depends on the igniter that you're using. So there are several different igniters and that's what I'm gonna to have to talk about next because that's really what it depends on. Everybody is familiar with the, the Estes igniter like that. Aerotech has several different igniters for their motors. This is the First Fire Mini. This is the First Fire Junior. You can see it's a little bit bigger. And then this one is the first fire and it's just kind of like the regular. So you can see the head on it is much bigger. Also, this right here is an E-match and there's two variety of E-matches. There's the big one that you see here and then there's the smaller one. So the brand name on the one that we sell here at Apogee Components is called the Firewire. And this one here, the smaller one is called the Firewire Mini or Junior. I can't remember the name of it, but you can see it's a little bit smaller. E-matches are great for ejection charges because they fire off really quick and the ejection charge is black powder and black powder ignites so easy. Just a spark will get it going. So these will work great. The nice thing about these, which I'll show you here in a minute, is they can be fired off almost instantaneously with any battery. It, they are so easy to fire. When you get into these other igniters, they get a little harder. So the igniter that you use depends on what rocket motor you're using. So first, when we're talking about staging, we have to say, what rocket engine are you trying to ignite? The motor that you use is gonna determine which igniter you use. So you're saying, well, can I use this E-match in a rocket motor? This is the next question is which rocket motor? Because some rocket motors you can, some you can't. We know that the Estes motors are black powder. And as I said before, black powder ignites easy. So these, you can use an E-match to ignite them. The only thing that you have to watch out for is will that igniter go into the nozzle? So that's the first check you're gonna make is does the igniter go in? So the, the mini goes in and this is a D3, so it's got a fairly big nozzle. That also goes in. If you're firing off black powder motors in your upper stage, an E-match will work good. And that is what we would recommend. And then it's almost any battery that you have. And we'll talk about criteria for batteries beyond that. The next place where an E-match can work is with Cesaroni rocket motors. And the reason is Cesaroni provides an E-match with their motors. So those will work. Where they don't work is with the Aerotech or Quest composite motors. There's, then there's two reasons for this. The first reason is the igniter has to go through the nozzle. And you can see it, it's not gonna go in. This nozzle is so small, even the smaller version won't go in. So that's not going in. And then the Quest motor, eh, that one actually does go in. But the second reason you can't use them is because composite motors like this, they need not only the spark, but they need pressure. And E-matches, they burn so fast and there's so little pyrogen on the end that they don't produce enough pressure inside the motor to sustain the thrust once it ignites. So with an Aerotech motor, you can't use them, but with a Cesaroni motor, you can. So say we do have a Quest or an Aerotech motor, which igniter are we gonna use? Well, if we can't use an E-match, what you have to use is the igniter that comes with the motor. Every motor that we sell has an igniter with it. And so you have to use the igniter that comes with it. So for an example, this Quest D22 will use the First Fire Mini 
and it will go easily into the nozzle and all the way down. And this is designed to ignite this motor. And it's the same with the bigger motors. This one will use the first fire mini that goes in. And then some of the bigger rocket motors, you know, H, I, J, K, L size, they're gonna use the bigger one. As long as it will go in, it will probably work. However, what we're gonna see here in a minute is not every igniter gets fired off, and then it depends on which battery you're using. First, which igniter are you gonna use, and does that igniter go into the nozzle? Now we go to which battery, because now it's can the battery fire off the igniter? And that's the big criteria, remember that. Can the battery fire off the igniter? You don't really have to worry about the electronics. What controls the ignition is the battery. So let's do a little test here. So first I am going to take an E-match and we'll fire off one of these and I'll show you how easily these are fired off. This right here is the smallest battery that we sell. I don't have the connector for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna touch the igniter wires right to the terminals on the battery. And hopefully you can see this. And normally you shouldn't do this indoors because it can create a fire hazard. So I've got one touching the metal in there. As soon as I, I touch the other one, it's going to go off. Just like that. That fires off easy. So you can see that any of the E-matches, no matter what battery you use, even these little tiny ones, are gonna work just fine. So if the little tiny one's gonna work, then that one's gonna work, then that one's gonna work, and even the biggest size is gonna work. And that's why we use them for the ejection charges because they fire off so quick with so little current that they have a lot of capability to ignite the ejection charge. This is not always going to ignite off the rocket motor, particularly an Aerotech motor. So now let's go to the next one. This is the First Fire Mini. And what we're gonna do with that one, we're gonna take a single cell. So all these here of this style, these are called LiPo batteries. And the LiPo batteries, they're, they're classified in the number of cells that they have in them. So all of these are single cell LiPos. And what that means is they have 3.7 to 4.1 volts of energy in them. The voltage is determined by the chemicals that make up the battery. So they all use the same chemicals so they're all gonna have the same voltage. A single cell, as I said, is just like this. The nice thing about a single cell is they are easy to recharge, and this is the, the charger, and it's just a USB charger. That you can just plug into your computer or whatever, and you just hook it up and charge it, and then in about an hour, they're, they're charged up and they're ready to go, and that's the nice thing about them. And so what I've done here is I've taken a connector and I've attached it to a switch. And what I'm gonna do is connect the igniter wires to here, hook up the battery, and we're gonna fire off an igniter. So I'm just gonna twist the wires together. And when you're testing things, you can do this at home. And we do recommend testing things to make sure your battery's gonna work. So I'm gonna spread the leads of this one and then just twist the wires together. Just make sure that those two don't touch right there. So now, as soon as I hook up a battery, and even this, this is a small battery, now I have a complete circuit. And as soon as I push the button, the igniter should go. What we're looking for is how fast the igniter burns. Because when we're flying a two-stage rocket, we want it to pop almost instantly because we need to generate a lot of heat and a lot of pressure inside the motor to sustain the ignition. So when I fire this one off, I'll give it three, two, one, fire. So that wasn't too bad. However, let's do it with a two cell battery. And this is a two cell battery. So a two cell battery is imagine two of these that are stacked up on top of each other. And that makes a two cell battery. So instead of having four volts of electricity, they have eight volts of electricity. So you get double the voltage. The other difference, you see there's two wires coming off. One of them is to hook up to our circuitry. This other one is to charge it. So this one has a different charger and this is called a balance charger. Because we have two batteries in there, we have to make sure that the voltage on each battery is identical. So this charger charges each of those two cells independently and it brings them up to the exact same voltage. 
So this other connector right here has three wires and that's so that it can charge both cells simultaneously. So that's the difference between a single cell and a two cell. This charger can also do a three cell, which would be 12 volts of electricity, but I don't have any three cell batteries right here. Okay, so here I'm gonna connect it to my setup. Again, same thing. I gotta switch two wires and a battery connector. Okay, so I'm gonna take this one and twist this one together. Okay, so again, I've got my battery and then it, the volt, you know, I get a complete circuit right there. So as soon as I push this one, so now watch how fast this one burns and compare it to this single cell. So you can see that was much faster, a lot more energetic. And this is what we recommend when we're using the Aerotech First Fire Mini igniters. And these are good for you know, the Quest motors and smaller Aerotech motors. Next, let's try Aerotech First Fire Junior. I'm gonna use the same setup and this is gonna be a two cell battery as well. Let's go back to the single cell, do that one first. Okay, so I got that one twisted together. Got my single circuit. or circuit ready to go. Three, two, one, fire. Okay, so it did work, but again, it was kind of slow. Will it ignite the motor? Maybe. Let's try it with the two cell battery. So three, two, one, fire. So that... So that was okay, it actually worked. So now is there any other ones that I might wanna try? We got the Estes igniter, let me get a good one here. Okay, let's try it with the single cell LiPo. So three, two, one, fire. Well, that was kind of wimpy. And so basically we would suggest stay away from the Estes igniters when you're doing a two-stage rocket. Not for even for black powder motors. They, they just ignite too slow. And actually they're too fragile. You don't want to put them in a rocket and have them bumping around on the way up into the launch pad and getting it prepped. They are fragile. So just stay away from the SS igniters. I just wanted to do a test to show you that, yes, the single cell LiPo, even the small ones might work. The two cell battery will probably be better. In fact, let's do that. Three, two, one, fire. So that was definitely better. Still, we would not recommend the Estes igniter in a two-stage rocket using electronics. It's just not as reliable as we'd like for something that is critical. Our next step is, okay, so we know the battery is going to fire the igniter. Now you definitely want to test out your electronics. So here on this board, I have a simple timer on one side, and right here is a Blue Raven. And then over here is just a, a GPS unit. So what we designed this for is we just wanted redundancy. So we're using a Blue Raven on one side and a simple timer on the other. You can also use for, for staging the Blue J Plus, which is this one right here. And it's really tiny, but this will also do staging and it will also do dual deployment. Plus, it's a recording altimeter with accelerometers and barometric sensors incorporated into it. So you get a lot of data back at the same time. So the next thing you want to do is to test your igniter with the electronics and the battery you've chosen. And you always want to do this. You want a ground test, which means, yes, you are going to burn igniters. It's much cheaper to burn one to make sure everything works than to launch one into the air and then find out your second stage doesn't ignite. It's far cheaper to do it on the ground than to do it in the air. Because when you do it in the air, it's still a test, but now you've burned the motor and the booster. All the electronics, the simple timer, which you see here, and the Blue Raven that you see here will accept the two cell battery. So this is our recommendation, use the two cell battery. Now the exception is the Blue J Plus, which is what you see here, this small one. This one, it's current limited. So the electrical current that's flowing through it is limited. So you can only attach a LiPo battery to it. And when you attach a LiPo battery, like we said before, if you're using a LiPo, you're limited to an E-match only. So you could fire off 
an Estes black powder motor or a Cesaroni motor, but not an Aerotech or Quest motor. It still gives you a lot of options, but if you want to do the Aerotech motors and you want to make sure that they go, then switch to either the Blue Raven or the Simple Timer that we sell here at Apogee. I know that this has been a lot of information, but if you have any questions, feel free to call us up and just confirm. Or on every page on our website, we have a phone number. You can always call us during office hours. But our recommendation always for a two-stage rocket is to use the two-cell LiPo battery. Until the next time, may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets and your two-stage rockets fly straight and true.